Hi guys, my name is Barry and welcome back to the channel and welcome to my ranking for the I Spit On Your Grave movies. Now there are five movies in this franchise. There is possibly six if you want to include Savage Vengeance from 1993. I'm not going to be including that because it's not officially part of the I Spit franchise. Although it does star Camille Keaton who starred in the original movie and Deja Vu. She goes under the alias of Vicky Lal as well, but it is a fan-made movie and is not officially part of the franchise. So for obvious reasons, I'm not going to be including that in the ranking for the movies. And at number five is I Spit On Your Grave, Deja Vu. This is the direct sequel to the first movie from 1978. And shockingly, well, maybe not shockingly, it was directed by the same guy, Mears Archie, and it stars Camille Keaton as Jennifer Hills again. So you would think that it would be semi-decent because these people are back, but you have to remember Mir Zarchi is only really known for I Spit On Your Grave and Camille Keaton is only really known for I Spit On Your Grave as well. So that doesn't really tell you much because the first movie is not a masterpiece. So you'd expect 40 odd years later, the movies, this movie is not going to be a masterpiece either. And it wasn't. It was horrendous from start to finish. The... The bad acting, the bad editing, the dialogue, everything was terrible. Even the concept of time was astonishingly bad. You've got characters in this movie who were the parents of characters from the first movie that was set 40 years earlier. So these people should be in their hundreds by now, but they're not. They look really nice and well. The film was so long. It was over two and a half hours long, I think it was, or two hours, 20 odd minutes. It had no right to be that long whatsoever. You had some scenes that were 10 to 15 minutes long, and it was just full of ridiculous dialogue. It could have been one minute long, some of these scenes, and I'm not shitting you. You could have a one minute scene that was amped up to 10 or 15 minutes. That's how bad the dialogue and the script was. And finally, what they did to Jennifer Hills was stupid. They bring her back just to kill her off as well. I didn't see the point in that whatsoever. It was an absolute damn shame. On a side note though, this was filmed before Halloween 2018. So if you look at it, this was probably the first movie in modern horror to bring back the original actress from the first movie from 40 years earlier. So it wasn't Jamie Lee Curtis, it was Camille Keaton. And at number four is I Spit On Your Grave 3. This is the return of the remake Jennifer Hills. I do admire the fact that this is the only movie in the franchise that didn't rely on a rape revenge scene to keep the movie going. That's not what the movie was about. It was more of an investigative movie and about a woman who's dealing with PTSD. They tried something different and for the most part, I think it worked. And it had a little nice twist at the end of the movie as well, a more ambiguous ending. Could there be a part four? You never know. Obviously there wasn't a part four, but they left it open for interpretation. Overall, I think this film was a decent film that didn't have a right to be anywhere near as good as it was. Some would say that the franchise, or the, at least the remake franchise, had two sequels too many. But at the same time, the third movie in the franchise, you would think would be absolute dog shit. But in actual fact, it's actually a really watchable movie. And then number three is I Spit On Your Grave 2. The biggest shock in this franchise was to make a sequel and not to include Jennifer Hills in it. But I understand them not using Jennifer because in this film it's someone else. And for it to happen to Jennifer twice would be the most shocking thing to ever happen and the most bad luck that someone could ever have. So I can understand and accept that it wasn't Jennifer in this movie. It had a similar formula to the last film. It's about a rape and revenge, but only this time it's kind of amped up because this girl was raped. She was taken to a different country, which is incredibly terrible, terrifying. After she's taken to another country, it looks like she's safe then it, she gets taken back to the same place again to be tortured again. So there's so many things that happen in this film that elevates everything that happened in the first film. The thought of being raped is bad enough, but then being taken to a foreign country, then thinking that you're safe, then taken back again, then being buried alive as well, which she's also buried alive in this movie. It's absolute nightmare fuel. Just like the third movie, it had no need to be made, no right to be made, but it was made and it was a decent movie. And then number two is the original I Spit On Your Grave from 1978. This was a movie that held up far better than I thought it would after 45 years. And it's one of the more um, popular 
exploitation movies from back in the day alongside movies like The Last House on the Left. My only issues were the lack of urgency and the lack of common sense throughout the entire film. It seems like the, the guys didn't really get what they deserved, unlike the other movies in the franchise. Unfortunately, the most shocking parts of this film were the rape scenes and not the revenge scenes, whereas in other films in the franchise, the more shocking and better parts were the revenge parts of the movie. So I think this one's a little bit of a topsy-turvy one, whereas the other movies were more enjoyable because of the revenge scenes. The only saving grace, though, is this one, out of all the band and exploitation movies of back in the day, this is one of the more watchable ones. And at number one is I Spit On Your Grave remake from 2010. This one, it takes the main ingredients of the original and even down to some identical scenes, but it just does it all better. It gives us more of a character development with not just Jennifer, but with the bad guys as well. The rape scene was more extended and more graphic, which is a bit of a shock because it's a more modern movie. I would expect them to leave some of that out, but they didn't, they extended it all. But what I do like about this one is the revenge part was much, much sweeter. This time we've also got a dirty cop, which makes the scenario even worse. But the acting, like I said, was a massive improvement over the original. The script was a massive improvement. I think everything, and the remake was a massive improvement on the original. It seemed like the original was only made to shock and show a rape scene, whereas the remake was made not only to shock us, but to show us the justice that was served in the movie for what they'd done to this girl. As I said, the revenge scenes were so sweet. They didn't disappoint with the revenge scenes. She really got what she wanted to get out of what she was doing to these guys. She really got revenge on these guys as well. And it was really hard to watch at times, but also satisfying at the same time. And although Camille Keaton was really good in the original movie because she had to do a lot of hard scenes, I think Sarah Butler gave us a powerhouse performance because she really showed before during and after, all the way through it, that she's a really good actress as well. Not a lot of people can take on the role of Jennifer Hills and Sarah Butler completely blew out of the park. And also, who would have thought that this movie would have spawned two remake sequels as well as have an inspiration into them doing an actual sequel to the original 40 odd years later. That just shows how much of an impact the remake actually had. So what are your thoughts on my ranking guys? I will be honest, I don't know what the right ranking would be for these movies because I don't think I've ever seen someone rank I Spit On Your Grave movies before. I didn't think it would, would, would have been possible a few years ago, but because of some of the sequels that were coming out, I thought, okay, there's, a, there's enough movies in this franchise now to be able to do a ranking for it. So leave your ranking down below if you've seen the movies. I know they're hard to watch, but if you have saw them, leave your ranking down below and let me know what your ranking is. And as always, thanks a lot for watching. Thanks for subscribing and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Get you, Barbara. Ever play in the cat? Ah! Ah! I want to look for